By the end of this video, you will know how traumatic memories are formed, why certain painful memories get stuck and become traumatic, and why other negative events do not. I'm going to walk you through the science so that if something bad were to happen to you or to someone you love, you will have a lower chance of that experience becoming a traumatic memory. And if you already have traumatic memories, you will finally understand why they formed in the first place. I also want to give you a few different ways to help your brain process these memories more effectively. That being said, let's dive in. When something frightening or overwhelming happens, the brain enters survival mode. The amygdala becomes highly active and floods your body with stress hormones. This changes how your memory works. Instead of storing the event as something that happened in the past, the brain stores it as something that still needs your attention. Researchers like Bessel van der Kolk have shown that traumatic memories do not get encoded as full stories. They are encoded as fragments. They also get encoded as images, sensations, emotions, a racing heart, a change in someone's tone, a specific sound. At the same time, the hippocampus, which normally organizes memories and places them in time, cannot do its job under extreme stress. So the experience never gets a clear, this is over tag. This is why trauma lives in the body. The brain never finished processing the memory. It locked the emotional and physiological state in place. Suppression also plays a major role. When someone tries to push the memory away, the body has to hold the emotional energy on its own. Research on suppression shows that the harder you try not to think about something, the more the brain activates around it. From the brain's perspective, avoiding a memory means the memory is dangerous. So the body reacts with stronger physical symptoms. The heart races, the chest tightens, the stomach drops. Not because the brain is trying to punish you, but because it is trying to protect you. It thinks the threat is still alive because it never learned anything new about the original event. Once the memory becomes paired with strong physiological responses, the brain has fewer chances to update it. Research shows that a memory only changes when it is brought into awareness while the body is calm enough to handle it. When the physiological response is too intense, the brain cannot integrate new information like I survived or I'm safe now. This is where many people get stuck. When they finally try to work on trauma, they usually fall into one of two patterns. First, they never bring it up. They avoid the memory completely. They stay busy. Maybe they numb themselves or jump from distraction to distraction. This may feel protective, but it stops the brain from ever completing the memory, which keeps the body in a constant threat response. Second, they rush the process. They want to talk about it and be done with it. They move quickly through the details, try to stay detached or push past the emotion. This looks like progress, but the brain cannot learn in that particular state. So moving forward too fast keeps the body activated and the memory never gets updated. So traumatic memories form when the brain encodes the experience in survival mode. The memory becomes fragmented because the hippocampus cannot organize it. Suppression strengthens the physiological reaction and the body pairs reminders of the event with intense sensations. So the brain never gets the chance to learn that the event is actually over. When memories become fragmented, they lose their narrative structure. Think of it like a story that has been torn into pieces. You have the images, the feelings, the bodily sensations, but they are not connected in a way that makes sense. The event never gets organized into a coherent sequence with a clear beginning, middle and end. The fragmentation is precisely what keeps trauma active in your nervous system. Research shows that when trauma memories remain fragmented, the brain continues treating them as ongoing threats. The memory needs to be completed, not just recalled. This means allowing the narrative to unfold all the way through, including what happened after the worst moment, not stopping right before the worst is going to happen. Your brain needs to know that you moved through it, that it is something in the past and that you survived it. Many people avoid the worst part of the memory, stopping right before the most painful moment, but this leaves the memory incomplete in your brain. The brain needs to know the full story, including the fact that the threat ended, that you made it through and that you're safe now. 
Completing the narrative helps your brain properly file that memory as a past event rather than a present danger. Before we discuss treatment approaches, it is important to understand that not all trauma is the same. Complex PTSD develops from prolonged or repeated trauma, such as ongoing childhood abuse, domestic violence, or other chronic traumatic situations. Unlike single event trauma, complex PTSD involves additional difficulties beyond the core PTSD symptoms. People with complex PTSD often struggle with emotional regulation, maintaining a stable sense of self, and forming trusting relationships. They may experience persistent feelings of shame, guilt, or worthlessness. These additional layers make complex PTSD harder and trickier to treat than single event PTSD because the trauma was ongoing rather than a single event. Complex PTSD may require longer treatment than traditional PTSD and often benefits from a larger variety of interventions. The treatment often needs to address not just the trauma memories themselves, but also the ways chronic trauma has shaped someone's view of themselves, of others, and the world. That said, research shows that trauma-focused treatments can still be highly effective for complex PTSD. The key is often allowing enough time for the work and sometimes using phase-based treatments that first establish safety and stabilization before moving into trauma processing. Processing trauma is not about forcing yourself to relive everything. It is about creating enough safety for the brain and the body to bring the memory forward without overwhelming you. When the nervous system can stay regulated while the memory is active, that is when the brain finally updates the threat signal and healing begins. One of the most well-researched approaches is EMDR, which stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. EMDR uses bilateral stimulation where the client attends to alternating bilateral visual, auditory, or sensory stimulation while confronting emotionally disturbing material. This is thought to facilitate accessing and processing of negative material while creating new associative links. The protocol typically involves eight phases. During the processing phases, you track a moving light with your eyes or listen to alternating sounds, or maybe you feel alternating taps on your hands while holding the traumatic memory in mind. Research using brain imaging has shown that bilateral alternating auditory stimulation leads to increased activation of the right amygdala while simultaneously decreasing activation in the left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. This is important because it essentially calms the amygdala's overactive response, helping the amygdala recognize the memory as a past event that no longer requires an emergency response. Studies have found that goal-directed eye movements suppress amygdala activity, which allows traumatic memories to be reprocessed without overwhelming the nervous system. The bilateral techniques disrupt episodic memories enough to remodel them through dual hemisphere processing, allowing traumatic memories that trigger the amygdala to be reintegrated as less frightening events. Another powerful approach is imagery rescripting. When rescripting focused on perceptual aspects of trauma experiences, it facilitated reconsolidation of memories and associated emotions. The process involves first reactivating the traumatic memory, making it accessible for modification, and then actively integrating new information into the mental image. The critical mechanism appears to be the contextualization of the traumatic memory by having the person deliberately focus attention upon it in a safe environment or introduce safe elements into the image. This helps encode the memory better by creating a new association. Instead of the memory being linked only to danger and helplessness, it becomes linked to safety, competence, and support. Imagery rescripting aims to facilitate a change in the meaning or reinterpretation of the trauma memory, leading to fundamental shifts in the core belief systems and behaviors and provides opportunity for individuals to identify and express responses that were inhibited at the time of the trauma experience. For example, you might imagine your adult self entering the memory and protecting your younger self, or maybe you imagine the outcome differently in a way that satisfies unmet emotional needs from that time. Another way to treat trauma is through somatic experiencing. Somatic experiencing treats post-traumatic symptoms by changing the interoceptive and proprioceptive sensations associated with their traumatic experience. 
Rather than focusing primarily on this story of what happened, this approach emphasizes working with the physical sensations and body responses connected to the trauma. Somatic experiencing differs from cognitive therapies in that its major interventional strategy involves bottom-up processing by directing the client's attention to internal sensations. The therapist helps you notice subtle shifts in your body, track sensations, and gradually discharge the stored survival energy. The approach avoids direct and intense evocation of traumatic memories, instead approaching the charged memories indirectly and very gradually, while facilitating the generation of new corrective interoceptive experiences that physically contradict those of overwhelm and helplessness. This gradual approach allows the nervous system to process small amounts of activation without becoming overwhelmed. The treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder, the body-oriented nature of this work, makes it particularly valuable for people who struggle with traditional talk therapy or who experience trauma primarily through physical symptoms. Another approach to treating trauma is known as Trauma-Focused Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or TFCBT, and it's another highly effective evidence-based treatment. It was originally developed for children and adolescents, but has been successfully adapted for adults as well. The treatment typically follows a structured approach summarized by the acronym PRACTICE. The components include psychoeducation about trauma and its effects, teaching relaxation and coping skills, helping with effective awareness and regulation, cognitive coping to identify and challenge unhelpful thoughts, creating a trauma narrative, in vivo mastery of trauma reminders, co-joined sessions when appropriate, and enhancing safety and future development. What makes trauma-focused CBT particularly effective is how it combines multiple elements. The psychoeducation helps people understand that their reactions are normal responses to abnormal events. The relaxation and coping skills provide tools to manage the physiological arousal that comes with trauma processing. The cognitive component helps people recognize connections among thoughts, feelings, and behaviors and replace maladaptive cognitions with more accurate or useful ones. The trauma narrative component is central to trauma-focused CBT. This involves creating a detailed account of the traumatic experience and gradually confronting avoided thoughts and feelings. The narrative helps people process the emotions connected to the trauma and reduce distress. Importantly, this is done at the pace the person can tolerate, with the therapist carefully monitoring their ability to stay within a manageable window of activation. Trauma-focused CBT typically involves 8 to 12 sessions and has strong empirical support for improving PTSD, depression, anxiety, and other trauma-related symptoms. It has also been found to be effective for treating complex PTSD, though treatment may take longer for those with more complex presentations. All effective trauma therapies share certain elements. They help you approach the memory rather than avoid it. They create enough safety that your nervous system can stay relatively calm while processing. They help your brain update the memory with new information about safety and survival, and they allow for the completion of the trauma narrative, not just the reliving of it. So if something traumatic happens to you, there are a few steps that you can take in the immediate aftermath that may help you prevent the memory from becoming stuck. First, know that intense reactions are normal. Your heart might race, you might feel numb, you might have trouble thinking clearly. These are natural survival responses, not signs that something is wrong with you. Psychological first aid emphasizes enhancing immediate and ongoing safety, providing physical and emotional comfort, helping identify immediate needs and concerns, and connecting with social supports. This is incredibly important, especially in the days following the trauma. Now, not everyone requires intervention after trauma, and most people go on to recover naturally, with only about 25% developing moderate to severe PTSD symptoms. However, if symptoms persist or interfere with your functioning beyond a few weeks, it is important to seek professional help. The timing of intervention matter. Research shows evidence that treating the trauma within three months of it happening has the best outcomes. This early window represents a time when the brain is still actively consolidating the memory, making it more malleable and responsive to intervention. If you do work with a therapist, help them understand your full experience. Do not stop at the worst moment of the trauma. Tell them what happened after, how you got to safety, who helped you, who, who was there for you, what you did to survive. Your brain needs to encode the complete story, including the resolution 
not just a crisis. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and see you in the next one.